Welcome to B-Dubs DM21, I'm B-Dubs and this is a New World Build Concepts video. The build you are about to see is purely conceptual and theory crafted based on information gathered from the closed and open betas. These have not been tested and all skills, passives and other details are subject to change as we head into launch. This build guide is purely to convey the concept of the extremely robust custom class system New World introduces and to hopefully provide you some direction when you make the journey to a turnum. Today, we build the Sage, a healer class designed for those who refuse to take any responsibility for someone's death at a party because their heals are just that good. Built with PvE in mind, though we will discuss PvP options throughout the video, this build was originally conceptualized by Masked Muskrat, the muskiest of masked rats. Alright guys, it's about time we get into the finer details of healing. Now, I want to let you guys know a few things up front. I have never personally healed in New World. However, I have talked to a lot of people who do heal. And a lot of the feedback that I received regarding the life staff and this build and why we went with this build is based off of the information that was relayed to me from numerous individuals during a live stream which carried over about 70 viewers. So, that being said, this is a build concept, and again, as a reminder to everybody, there, there are very big reasons as to why we picked the healing build that we did. Now, bear in mind, this heal build is not intended for Siege, nor is it intended for you to use on some type of tank, weird, weird tank build. Like, just honestly, I don't think life staffs belong on tank builds, and I really wish people would stop recommending it, but we'll touch on that later when I give my version of a paladin build. All that being said, though, the life staff is one of the most powerful weapons in the game, and there is a very good reason for this. Uh, some of the expeditions that you will be facing will have incredibly difficult encounters uh, where you will need to do massive amounts of healing and in short periods of time. That's the reason why the life staff is as strong as it is. And it naturally works just as strong as it does in PvE than it does in PvP. It's the reason why life staffs are generally considered... Uh, a big threat in PvP encounters. You usually see the life staff user and you know, I gotta take him out. So congratulations on deciding to play heal. Now, let me give you the Sage, the build concept for Sage. And we'll talk about the finer points of healing and we'll talk about some of the other things that I've learned uh, by talking to you guys, the viewers, about healing and how to be efficient, how to maximize your healing, and also how these skills work together to give you uh, the biggest bang for your mana buck. Let's get into it. First, let's talk about the weapons. You're going to be using a life staff and an ice gauntlet. What? Yeah, no, for real, this works very well. All you gotta do is throw an Amber Gem into the Ice Gauntlet. The whole purpose of the Ice Gauntlet is simply to allow you to do more damage without actually having to have the Ice Gauntlet in your possession or, or attached to you or, you know, out. The Ice Gauntlet allows you to do damage with the Ice Gauntlet while you're using the Life Staff. And that's a very good combination. We do this by the Ice Pylon. Now the Ice Pylon, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, is not normally an ability I would ever recommend to anybody using the Ice Gauntlet. However, in the hands of a healer who just wants to do damage without being locked away from their life staff, this actually works very good. A placed ice pylon that fires ice projectiles dealing 50% weapon damage at enemies within a 20 meter range for 15 seconds or until killed. An ice pylon creates 1 meter radius frost area that enables frost powers. Costs 15 mana. Okay? Has a 10 second cooldown. And that's really short. Then increases damage of the ice pylon by 10% for slowed targets. Ice Pylon regenerates to full health 5 seconds after the last damage taken, so it heals itself. Dodging with full stamina increases the Ice Pylon rate of fire for 3 seconds. 
A successful hit extends the ice pylon's lifetime by one second. And finally, this doubles the ice pylon's health and extends the ice pylon frost radius to 5 meters. Standing in this area doubles quick frost and empowered frost bonuses. It's really good. That being said, we put this down, it does damage. I can switch back to life staff immediately and go back to healing. While this ice pylon is still doing damage. Nice. The next skill we're going to take is the ice storm. This is a very fast, easy to cast skill. It does some damage. And it slows everybody within the radius. Five all slows enemies within a five meter radius of the frosted area. 25% slow, 20 meter range, five second duration. 17% weapon damage every 0.25 seconds. Adds up quite a bit. Very nice. Then incoming damage is increased by 10% for three seconds to enemies in Ice Storm if below 50% health. This becomes really handy. You throw down your your pylon, and then you throw down the storm, and if that enemy is below 50% health, they're going to take 10% more damage. Really, really nice. And I believe that's incoming damage by all sources. So now you just gave everybody in your group a buff. This is practically a support skill at this point. And then Ice Storm mana cost is decreased by 80% at full mana. So you might want to maybe put down this first to reduce the amount of uh, mana that you're going to be using. But quite frankly, you really shouldn't be at full mana when you put this down during a normal boss encounter in a PvE area. Right? Doesn't really come up that much. Uh, but hey, you know, uh, maybe you could take this away and spend it somewhere else. Uh, it might not be the best use of a point, so do consider this to be a free point, and you can put this anywhere you want. Uh, finally, we did not take the Punishing Storm. And the reason why we did not take the Punishing Storm, and this could be a bug, so let's see if it's fixed on launch, is that for whatever reason, when Punishing Storm is selected, it will cause the storm to disappear when you change weapons. But... If you don't have that mod, then the storm will stay when you change weapons. Since the entire idea behind this concept is to keep the storm going while you change weapons, we really don't want to take this perk because then the storm will just disappear. We got to get back to life staff. We got to get back to healing. We don't have time to wait for the storm to go away. So we're going to drop pylon, drop storm, switch back immediately. Finally, we have the entombed on this build, which for whatever reason, should you ever run out of mana, which you really shouldn't. But should this happen, you have the ability to regain your mana. So the player can entomb themselves in ice and become invulnerable and greatly increase mana regeneration. The ice tomb has a lifetime of 10 seconds and can be destroyed, but very unlikely. Players have two options to cancel the entomb. You can exit by right mouse button, or you can spend some mana with the left mouse button, and it causes a damaging knockback for 20 mana. Very handy ability. If you get caught, or maybe something happened and the tank dies, which... You know, clearly it's not your fault, right? Right? Right. Okay, totally not your fault. The tank was being dumb, right? It happens. It happens. And everything decides it wants to kill you and eat your face. You can get entombed while someone else raises the tank. And then the tank will hopefully pop potion and get all the hate off of you again. That would be really handy. And then you can break out of the ice tomb, knocking everything back. And you're back on your feet ready to rock and roll, right? Very handy ability for emergency situations. That's when we use Entombed. It's practically an invulnerability. It's not an invulnerability, but it's practically an invulnerability. Very handy. Next up, this increases the defense of the tomb by 25% for three seconds. I'm sorry, your defense by 25% for three seconds after breaking out of Entombed. Also very handy if you got everything attacking you and you got to break out. You break out, you get the 25% defense bonus. And then this cleanses all debuffs when being Entombed. All debuffs. 
That includes your dots. That includes, well, really anything. All debuffs get cleansed when you enter Entombed. Yay. Entombed is really handy. Very, very handy. You want this. Very good. Next up. Um, let's get into the life staff. So basically, again, we'll get into these passives here in a minute, but those are the skills. So now we're going to get into the life staff stuff. We're going to ice pylon, we're going to ice storm, and then we're going to switch to the life staff. Yay. You'll see the abilities that we have picked, and I'm sure many of you are going, what? A healing build without lights and brace? Actually, yeah. No, for real, a healing build without lights and brace. Hear me out. First ability we're going to talk about today is Sacred Ground. You create an area on the ground that lasts for about 15 seconds and heals 20% weapon damage every second. Costs 15 mana. Okay? So every second someone stands in here, they're getting 20% weapon damage every second. Nice. That's a 300% weapon damage heal per person who stands in it, should they stand in it, for the full duration of the heal. Now your target for Sacred Ground will be the tank. And if he's a good tank, he should be in it for the full 15 second duration. Then we get Regenerate Stamina and Mana 100% faster while in Sacred Ground. Very good. So now they're getting their Stamina and their mana back if they're a spellcaster. Really good. This is particularly good for tanks who need to block. So if they're in there and they're blocking and they're mitigating damage, then their stamina should not really run out. This is very helpful for any tank. Very helpful. This needs to be targeted at a tank. Okay? Next, while allies are in Sacred Ground, they are healed for 50% more from all healing. They're healed 50% more from all healing. Nice. This stacks with the next skill we're going to talk about, Beacon. That's right, this will increase the Beacon's heal by 50%. So what is Beacon and how does it work? Well, you shoot out a light projectile that deals 146% weapon damage to enemies. It attaches to its target and heals all nearby allies for 20% weapon damage for each second for 10 seconds, so 200% weapon damage. All right, really cool. And it costs 16 mana. Now, the cool thing about this one is that it's, uh, it's a very strong ability. You're getting 200% weapon damage healing per target, per ally who's within this area. If you cast this on a boss, everybody should pretty much be within this area. Uh, for the most part, everybody should be within this area. So everybody's getting this heal, and everybody's getting very happy because of said heal. The tank's getting the heal, which, by the way, he gets a 50% increase to this healing. So now he's actually going to pick up 300% weapon damage healing. All right? Really good. Uh, and then everybody else should be picking it up as well. Everybody's getting healed by Beacon. Aim for the boss. Put it on the boss. And everybody gets healed. And we have a good day. You can also apply this to allies. However, I do recommend you apply this to the boss to give everybody an equal chance to grab this heal. Next up, Beacon's area of effect is now 50% larger. When this happens, it becomes basically twice the radius of sacred ground. This is a far more effective method of group healing than sacred ground. That's why I keep saying sacred ground is a tank heal, right? And Beacon is your group heal, but really it's your group and tank heal. Very handy. Heals everybody. Yay. We enjoy that very much. Next up, Beacon lasts 5 seconds longer. So now our Beacon duration is now 15 seconds. Yeah. The so 300% weapon damage. 450% weapon damage for the tank who is in Sacred Ground. That's a lot of healing. That's a very thick heal. It's awesome. And here, we get down here, you have two choices. Right now, I have the point spent in Speed of Light. Speed of Light is really more or less your PvP pick. If you want to use this healer in a PvP environment, which you can, this heal works in PvP and in PvE. But if you want to 
do this in PvP, I want you to consider for a moment our Feral Lumberjack build, or maybe our Incinerator build. If you put Beacon on an allied player who is flagged for PvP, who happens to have Bloodlust and Charge on a Great Axe, not only are they getting 30% haste from their Bloodlust, but now they're going to get your 20% haste. Now this haste is reapplied every single time Beacon ticks. This is now an 18 second haste. Because the haste lasts for 3 seconds. So, 15 second duration for the heal, and then 3 seconds beyond the last tick. Very nice. It's an 18 second haste for 20%. It applies to everybody who's running next to that target. Yeah. Your friends are going to have no problems closing gaps, getting close to targets, and getting damage done people are not going to be able to run away. Oh, and here's the kicker. It heals. It's awesome! Beacon is incredibly powerful in PvP. I do strongly recommend Speed of Light for PvP. Please use it. It's good. And an Incinerator or um, the Feral Lumberjack players in particular will absolutely love and adore you for it. Next up. Buffs grant you... Uh, the buffs you grant last 20% longer. This is your PvE. You really want this for PvE. Because it extends the duration of Beacon by 20%. It extends the duration of your Sacred Ground by 20%. This is actually pretty good. We, we like that. Because longer Beacons make us all happy. Okay? The final skill we need to talk about is Splash of Light. Splash of Light, you and all group members within 100 meters. It's a very wide area of effect. That's huge. 100 meters. It's, it's a... That's big. Okay? Are healed for 50% weapon damage. Costs 15 mana. It's on a 15 second cooldown. If you heal a target below 50% health, you gain 3% of your max mana. So you get some mana exchanged back. And then you get Splash of Light also removes one debuff. I cannot express how important it is to remove debuffs from your allies. As a healer, it is on you to cleanse your allies of their debuffs. Now we have more than one tool to do this, but this is a really, really good skill to use should the entire party suddenly become afflicted by some type of debuff. Now it just says debuff, so I would imagine this would work for stuns as well. You can imagine how powerful that would be in PvP. You're playing with somebody and they get trapped, they get rooted, they get some type of slow, maybe a burn, maybe they get hit by poison arrow or something. Pop this bad boy, not only are they now healed, but that debuff has now been removed essentially rendering that ability skill, that skill shot that the opponent used against you, useless. It's gone. Be mindful of what debuffs are on your allies and know how to cleanse them should you need to. This is one of your tools to do this. And the thing is, is that since this is a group-wide purify, a group-wide for 100 meters cleanse, uh, this is your most effective tool at doing so. Not having this ability is a little silly in both PvP and in PvE because of your ability to remove debuffs to all of your friends in your group that are within 100 meters of you. This is great for Siege. This is great for PvE. This is great for PvP. This is just great all the way around you want this. Very good. Now here's the next one. And this one is special. I like this one a lot. We get the ultimate. When you heal an ally, if their health is below 50%, you will heal for 30% more. Yes, this stacks with shared recovery. Which is... Uh, if you heal a target, you'll get 3% of your max mana back. But now, if they're below 50% health, not only do you get max mana back, which is nice and handy, it's a good way to get your mana back, 
but now they're going to get a 50%, I'm sorry, 30%, you know, greater heal. So now your heals from your Sacred Ground, 30% better. Splash of Light, 30% better. And Beacon, 30% better. All very good, strong skills. This is a very good passive. So essentially, the way this works, and your rotation for healing, you're going to put Sacred Ground underneath your tank. He's going to... What's going to happen is he's going to grab the boss or engage on the enemy, right? He's going to hopefully rotate the boss. Once he rotates that boss, he is now in position, and if he's a good tank, he'll stay there. That's when you put your sacred ground under his feet. Then you're going to cast beacon on the boss or on it, it, PvP. It's better to put on, a, on an allied player Okay, in PvP on an allied player. All right or on the boss for PvE, okay? And then you're going to begin your light and heavy attacks. Here's the cool thing about the life staff. All of your light and heavy attacks no longer cost mana. Light attacks now heal the target for 20% weapon damage when passing through an ally. Or, if they have a debuff, you can remove the debuff by using a heavy attack. So what this means is, is that at no point should you just be standing there wondering what's going on or what to do. This allows us, this enables us to sit in that always be casting mentality. Always be casting, always be casting. So you could just sit there and light attack the boss. Your DPS should know, if I want to heal, all I gotta do is put my body between the boss and the healer. You should be at the very back. No one should be behind you. If you have a ranged ally who is behind you, they are messing up. Okay, that's how healing works in this game. They should be in front of you. And here's the cool part. Your light attacks will now heal you. I will now heal your allies as it passes through them. It says passing through an ally. So you're doing damage and you are healing at the same time. And so I wanted to call this a Sage build, even though pretty much every heal build will work this way. Uh, yes, it's another Final Fantasy XIV reference. Leave me alone. Now, lasers, I put down a turret. It makes sense. I digress. That being said, getting back into this, our rotation, again, Sacred Ground on the tank, Beacon on the boss, and then you're going to use Light Attacks to heal any damage that the party may have sustained in that period of time. If everybody's good and happy, and all the healing is doing its job, you then switch over, drop your pylon, drop a storm, switch back. And now you're going to light attack and you're going to refresh your sacred ground and you're going to refresh your beacon and you're going to use splash of light when players need a cleanse or if their health drops below 50 percent only use splash of life when their health drops below 50 percent there's a couple reasons for this one obviously we're taking advantage of divine blessing but two it enables you to use the heal when you need to use the heal. Oftentimes, healers feel that they just... Anybody, anytime someone's got damage, oh my gosh, I gotta heal them immediately. No. Stop it. Alright? Jimmy Soft Boots is gonna be okay if he's sitting at 75% health. Keep damaging the boss. Jimmy Soft Boots will be fine. When his health drops below 50%, and it's just him because Jimmy is a really bad dodger and he got hit by a mechanic, just shoot him with a light attack. It's all he needs. But if there's a group-wide damaging event, or things have gone completely haywire, and everybody's taking damage, then when a couple of them are below 50%, you can use Splash of Light for a huge heal. This will heal them considerably. Okay? But make sure you hold on to Splash of Light and only use it when at least one group member is below 50% health. This will help you capitalize this heal to the greatest degree possible. Okay? Okay. Alright. 
It's the only time we use this. Now we move on. When you hit with a light attack, you reduce all your cooldowns by 5%. Remember that big fat cooldown we had on the beacon? Yeah. It's 35 seconds. We can reduce that cooldown by 5% whenever you hit with a light attack. Well, considering you're only using two abilities, and the last ability you used was beacon, and your next thing should either be putting down an ice pylon or a storm, or light attacks, and your light attacks heal, you should be hitting with your light attacks all the time. And every single time you hit with a light attack, you are reducing significantly the duration of uh, Beacon's cooldown. Significantly so. Okay, every light attack you hit, you hit, you hit, you just bring Beacon that much closer to cast. This is encouraging you as a healer to do damage. And you as a healer are responsible for doing damage. Okay? Some other games have taught you guys some very bad habits. As a healer, you are responsible for doing damage. This game rewards you for doing damage by allowing your light attack to heal and by reducing your cooldowns by doing damage. Do damage. Moving on. Arcane Justice, when hit in battle, activate a healing aura for you and nearby friends in a 4 meter radius, healing you for 10% weapon damage each second for 10 seconds. This is on a 120 second cooldown. We're taking this because, believe it or not, the times you as a healer get hit should be very seldom. It happens more often than it should, because I think people are still learning how to play. But you should not have a problem with getting hit. If you do get hit, or maybe you can intentionally get hit to provide this heal, then you have the opportunity not only to heal yourself for free, but also everybody who is within a 4 meter radius of you. I think there are some very cool strategic moments where you use this. For example, if you're in PvP and someone hits you and engages with you, you now are getting a heal. Stack on top of your buddy, give him the heal. It's real nice. It's not bad. But now the player who hits you feels a little silly because they activated your trap card. Yeah. Not cool. Next up. Sacred protection. While holding a life staff, you increase the base health of all of your friendlies in your group by 5%. Wow. Just by having the life staff in your hands, everybody gets a 5% health buff. This is particularly helpful for your tank. And your tank will love this. He will want your heal. He will want your buff. Very much so. He should be very happy with this, he or she. Right. This is good. Desperate speed. When you heal an ally with less than 50% health, life staff cooldowns are reduced by 10%. You can do this once per 5 seconds. Oh, wait a minute. Don't we have a perk that also increases our healing for allies who are below 50% health? Yeah. So not only are we getting a cooldown reduction when we heal an ally below 50% health, but now we're healing them for 30% more. This is very good synergy, desperate speed with divine blessing, and again, that helps us reduce our beacon cooldowns. So when you see someone drop below 50%, don't be afraid to hit splash of light. That is perfectly fine. Do it, because it will reduce your cooldowns with this passive. And that passive, very good. So again, splash of light whenever people drop below 50% health. If you know there's a big AoE coming up and people are going to get hit by it, top them off if necessary. If they don't need topping off, get ready to spend it after that big hit goes off. Okay? Very, very handy. Then finally, over here, we have after a dodge roll, your heals are 20% more effective for 5 seconds. You're going to want to dodge Sacred Ground and Beacon back to back as fast as you can. That is now going to provide a 20% bonus to your heals. Of the Sacred Ground and of the Beacon. Make sure you dodge and then place. Okay? Very, very handy. I dig it quite a bit. Defensive Light is a little silly. You should not be blocking melee attacks with a Light Staff. Okay? Just... That should not be happening to you. All right, and that is the life staff abilities. Now, someone's going to ask me, I'm going to hear this comment. And this is the comment I'm going to hear. 
Why not Light's Embrace? Now look, Light's Embrace is a very bad ability and an attractive rapper. It looks great. You see Light's Embrace and you go, that's awesome, I want that. It's a great heal. Gives me the biggest heal numbers in the game, and it's true, it does. Immediately. But it's actually one of the weakest heals in the game. And we're going to get into this. So, Light's Embrace costs 18 mana. It is a single target, targeted heal. And it does 100% weapon damage healing, plus 30% more for each buff that is on a target. And believe it or not, a lot of people can buff themselves, get buffs from other players, particularly in group play. And these guys can have quite a few buffs on them at any given time. And we're talking four or five buffs, right? Right. So with four buffs, now this is doing 200 and what, 20% weapon damage of healing. Huh. That's a big heal. It, it's it's a big single target heal. That's that's a big heal, and it can get even bigger. But let's just say four, two hundred and twenty percent weapon damage worth of healing. This costs eighteen mana, and it has a cooldown of four seconds. So it's something you can use very frequently. However, it costs a lot of mana. It has a four second cooldown. Let's move on. When you heal a target with Light's Embrace, the target receives 25 stamina. I don't think that's as helpful as it sounds, but some people might beg to differ. Honestly, you're giving people stamina, particularly your tank, the one who needs the stamina, um, stamina through Sacred Ground. So that restores their stamina and mana. So, yeah, that, we're, we're already giving stamina with Sacred Ground. Uh, and then next, when you heal a target with Light's Embrace, you gain 1% of your max mana for each buff your target has. Oh, yay, so I get 4% of my mana back. It's a pretty weak passive. Now, the reason why this ability is really shiny and people love using it is because it does give the biggest heal number in the game. Believe it or not, there is something called overhealing. And that's when you expend too much mana for too little healing. And uh, so say, for example, uh, my tank's at 75% health and I throw a Light's Embrace on him because I want to heal him. Well, now I have overhealed him. I spent 18 mana to restore 25% of his health bar. But if we take a look at Beacon, which is a huge AoE heal and has the potential to actually heal everybody for... <laughs> it's a lot uh, so 5 players right 20% weapon damage each second for 10 seconds and then that it gets extended to 15 seconds alright it's 300% weapon damage again that, now that's 80% more per player right and it only costs 16 mana and this is a heal over time so as damage is happening players are getting healed and that's really good right and it's a much larger area than Sacred Ground, so it's easier to stay in Beacon. And it's giving everybody a haste buff. And that's especially handy in PvP. As you can see, we get way more healing out of Beacon, because you have to multiply the healing effect times 5 for 5 players. And all players should be within the effect radius of Beacon. Because if there are helpful things out there that are helping players stay alive, they should probably take advantage of it and be inside of the beacon radius. That is there for them. They should be using it. If they're not using it, tell them to use it. Very big. That's a much bigger heal than Light's Embrace could ever be, and it costs less mana. Now, you're right in saying, but it has a 35 second cooldown, B Dubs, where Light's Embrace is on a four second cooldown. Well, let me ask you a question. What happens if you use Light's Embrace once every four seconds? One, if you wanted to heal everybody in your party with Light's Embrace, it would take you 20 seconds. Two, 
and I'm not a math whiz here, so let's break out the handy dandy calculator. If we were to go around healing everybody with Light's Embrace, it would cost us a grand total of 90 mana. And we have 100 mana. So this is now 90% of your mana and 20 seconds expended to heal everybody in your group. It's a very inefficient skill. Now you're out of mana and you're having a bad day. You can't reapply Sacred Ground and you can't do the other things that you need to do to heal because you use an ability that just simply, quite frankly, costs too much mana for not enough bang for the buck. Meanwhile, we can use Splash of Light, which only costs 15 mana. Now, since this hits all five group members, it actually does a total of 250% weapon damage healing split across five players. 50% each. That's more mana, I mean, so that's more healing than what a four buffed target would get from Light's Embrace. Furthermore, this gives you back some mana if the target's below 50% health, but you should be using this when they're below 50% health, so yay. And then it also removes the debuff. Light's Embrace does not remove debuffs. So you're paying more mana for less healing and no cleanse than you are with Splash of Light. So once again, Splash of Light is the clear health winner. Then we look at Sacred Ground, where once again, for point for point, mana per healing, Sacred Ground wins. Sacred Ground also has the added benefit of restoring stamina for a long period of time. It lasts 15 seconds, so it's a stamina over time restoration ability, which is far more valuable than a one-time 25 stamina gift. So Sacred Ground has far better stamina recharging capabilities, and it works for group. If someone needs stamina, they can stand in the Sacred Ground and call it a day, right? So that's really helpful. And then on top of that, Sacred Ground augments and improves all healing from all of your other abilities. Basically, effectively giving you significantly more healing than you could possibly get using Light's Embrace. Oh, and here's the best part. It only costs 15 mana. If you're using your Light Attacks like you should be, you will be reducing all of your cooldowns by 5%. Not only that, but your light attacks can heal in it of themselves. So at this point, I cannot think of a single situation, not one, where Light's Embrace is the correct choice here. Now this is coming from talking with experienced healers and hearing them out. We had a few people try to defend Light's Embrace and at the end of the day, the only thing they could say in defense of it is, well, so so-and-so uses it, and that's not a good reason for me. There's a lot of people out there who look like really good players. People are still trying to figure out the meta. But at the end of the day, numbers are number. Numbers are numbers, and math is math. Math has an absolute truth to it. You run the numbers, which one gives you more value? At this point, Light's Embrace does not give you enough value for the mana spent. Period. Does it give you a big giant heal number? Yeah, the biggest numbers you'll ever see. But do you need that? Well, no, not if you're using Splash of uh, Sacred Ground, Beacon, and Splash of Light correctly. Not if you're, you know, if you're standing there waiting to put a heal out, then yeah, I guess Light's Embrace might be helpful, but that should never happen. And not only that, but Light's Embrace, because of the nature of how the skill is used every four seconds, if you're casting this every four seconds, or frequently, not only are you burning mana, but now you're not even damaging the boss. And that's not good. So please, hear me out, healers. Hear me out. Hear me out. Please consider using this setup. The only time I might swap in a Light's Embrace is if I'm in PvP and I decide Sacred Ground was more of a liability for me in PvP than a help. 
So Sacred Ground is a bit of a dangerous skill to use in PvP because it enables me as your opposition to have a general idea of where people are going to want to go to so I can pre-aim my skill shots. If I can pre-aim my skill shots and more or less guarantee my success in hitting a target because I know they're going to the Sacred Ground, then I'm going to get the hits and that'll enable me to lock people down, get them off the point, and kill them. So if sacred ground becomes a liability in open world pvp it's absolutely mandatory in siege pvp uh, but if this becomes a liability in open world pvp then yes i could definitely see the advantage to lights embrace because sometimes you really do need that big burst heal uh when you're dealing in pvp situations that is the only time i can see where lights embrace could come in handy only in open world pvp otherwise this other setup is just better, especially with the haste on Beacon. This 20% haste, and it's an 18 second duration because it gets reapplied every single time Beacon heals. And it gets reapplied to everybody who Beacon impacts. So they can give everybody in your group a 20% haste buff. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like running around a tournament all that much. Kind of has a joke, it's called a running simulator. If there's something we can do to speed everybody up by casting beacon on them, well, that's just as good as a mount as far as I'm concerned. It's a really good skill. You get so much value out of these skills. It's insane. And the fact that it encourages us to always be casting as you should. It just makes it all the much better. Guys, this is the Sage build. I really hope you enjoyed it. One more time, just so you guys can quickly see the passives being used here for the Ice Gauntlet. I didn't get too much into this. The important thing is take these three skills, run this down all the way to the bottom. Uh, you know, I, I recommended Refreshing Frost and I recommended Defiant Freeze and also Quick Frost. But honestly, it's not that big a deal. You really should barely be using your light. Uh, your ice gauntlet it's purely about throwing down the pylon throwing down the storm maybe getting some mana back on critical hits but that's about it okay this you're not here to do damage put an amber gem in your ice gauntlet to increase the damage you can do with this but in short in the ice gauntlet drop pylon drop storm switch back to the life staff continue healing reapply your big heal sacred ground and beacon healing takes priority but then when you get the opportunity drop the ice pylon again drop another storm switch back and get back to healing Okay, you need to reduce your cooldowns, you need to keep healing people with your light attacks, and you need to make sure you're ready to reapply Sacred Ground and reapply Beacon as those fall off their respective targets. Okay, that's a great way to heal. I highly recommend this heal build. I would recommend this to my own healer. I think this is an excellent build that with this strategy would work amazingly well. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more builds and learn more about the different ways you can build classes here in New World, please check out the playlist. You'll see it in the end card. Also, don't forget to subscribe because... It's the right thing to do. It's the morally correct thing to do. Honestly, you watch this whole video. You might as well just subscribe now. I mean, now, you know, you're this far into it, you know, you're committed as far as I'm concerned. So, thanks. I think. You're welcome. I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe out there. Keep the faith in game on. Have a good one.